Hey folks, I'm Peter Melhorn, and in this video, I'm going to show you how I catch bluegill. Alright guys, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie up my little brim rod. I'll try putting some brim bluegill in the boat. Got my little rig here that I had down in Florida. I was using to catch something, but trying to catch something. I'll take a piece of uh, monofilament. What do we got here? 15 pound Andy. Cut me a little piece off of it. My rig wrap. Scissors, you got to get some of these ceramic cutters. What I'm going to do, basically just splice these lines together. I think this is basically two uni knots that I tie together. Get your lines laid parallel like that. Make a loop. Go through that loop two or three times. Do it on one side, and you do the same thing on the other. It's a great way to tie lines that are pretty close in size together. I've got some, my main line on here is 20 pound braid. So you got two knots and you pull them tight together. Poof, it's good to go. He's down to putting the hook on the end. You know why I put this leader on here. Didn't have any little bitty circle hooks. So I stopped at my bait store and got me some of these long shanked little gold hooks. Fisherman's knot, nice and simple. You wonder why I put a leader on here. Uh, it's in case I break something off or if I start catching a whole bunch of them. You ain't got to worry about them eating through the line. that nice and snug okay turn that up a little bit better and all I'm gonna do just a little bobber on there so it's set up a couple feet deep and I am good to go now I just have to go find me some bluegill. All right, so what I did, pulled up on a place I've never ever fished for before in my life. But I feel confident they're in here. A little piece of this worm. Don't need much. Now with these long shank hooks, you can put a lot more on here a lot easier than I can. A lot of times I use circle hooks, little bitty number eights. They work great. The thing about these is, these long shank hooks, you thread that piece up on there. This looks like a little jig. So what I'm doing is just trying to pick off some bait here. See what's in here. And there's number one. There it is. Boom. Number one in the boat. Throwing up around that brush. <clears throat> Not there. Missed that one. There's some sunken brush over there. Usually a good place to pick them off this time of year. And there he is. All I got is a little 4000 series reel on here. It's a 20 pound braid. Why so heavy a braid? Well, it's big enough I can cast it. I happen to catch a big fish, I got it. Also use these rods down at the coast. Uh, the other thing is you go too much smaller, it's just a pain in the butt to tie knots when the line gets really, really small. Braid is so fine already. Boom, there's another one. Now, did I have any clue these fish were here? No, never. I've never actually pulled on this spot to fish before. It's another one. Just figured most of these fish are pulled up near the banks right now. Water's 81. It's a little colder than I thought it was going to be. But uh, <clears throat> see I'm a little bit far off the brush right there. Probably not going to get bit. I don't leave these things in place long. Uh, it's pretty much cast it if you don't get hit this time of the year pretty quickly there ain't no fish there it's almost a bass fishing mentality boom there he is there he is there's a small little brim good bait size legal for bait in the carolinas you cannot catch them in a cast net though that's why we're out here doing it legal with the rod and reel sure you can cheat but you know what i say 
integrity. It's what you do when nobody's looking. Nobody's looking right now. I could throw a cast net over there, catch a few limbs, and catch a whole bunch of brim, but it's not how we play it. What I'm using, I've got a remote here for my trolling motor. And I just use that. I do not run a foot pedal. I use this. I know a lot of guys like to fish off the bow. That's a good way to do it, but I got, there goes one right there way out here. He just hit when I was turning the boat. Came off too, that'll teach you. I do not fish off the bow because my bait uh, live well is at the back of the boat. So I just fish the back of the boat. It's a little more of a pain in the butt, but it's all right. Sometimes I'll take a uh, cast net bucket and uh, put it up at the front and put some fish in it. But I'll tell you another thing, a lot of times, I don't know why it is, these fish like to hit it when it first hits the water. You miss a hook set and pull that bobber across the water, it's like uh, they don't like it as good. There's one there. Bam. Nice little fish, and you can see I have not changed bait. These are not big ones. I have not changed bait. I've caught, what, a half dozen bluegill all on that same piece of bait. It goes up on this Aberdeen hook very nicely. The thing is, these bluegill will stay up here and spawn Pretty much as long as this water is above 70 degrees, 75 degrees, somewhere in there. So they will be up here pretty much all summer, about every 30 days. That's what they say. I don't know who they is, but and that right back there looks like a place they'd spawn. See that dark colored stuff? For some reason they like that dark bottom. I don't know if it's got something to do with whatever the material is, leaves, that kind of stuff. But... There's always brim around that stuff for some reason. This is a little small one. Boom, but we'll take him. All of these fish, no matter their size, will catch catfish. Let's see if there's a big buck, big buck brim in there somewhere. A lot of times they won't come off the bed, especially here later into the, we're probably into the second spawn now. They don't want to come off of it. They've been fighting stuff off for weeks. Well, not as many in there as I thought. I thought I'd get bit better. Try one more cast up in there. A little bit further up in. Usually the place is in the back of cove pockets. That's where I usually find them things. Like I said, not sure. I think that stuff probably warms up a little bit quicker. Especially early on. Probably really doesn't matter now. I'm about to get my boat stuck back here. Churning up some mud. Getting a little too shallow there, Dieter. Pay attention. Yep, they're not up there on that dark stuff. I'm gonna pull back up here on that tree. I'll tell you another thing. When you get boat weight coming by like this, it's like they don't want to bite when that happens. I'm not sure why. I guess if your house was getting rocked, you wouldn't want to sit down to eat dinner, would you? Oh, caught me a tree. That ain't good. Generally, it ends with me having to go wading over in the water to get my bobby back. Yes, they're only 49 cents a piece, but I am that cheap. All right, I'm gonna sweeten this bait up a little bit here. I still catch them with that little piece of bait, but might as well put on a bigger piece. I keep the live well handy. Wash my hands off. My boat's too pretty to get dirty right now. So pretty. It's like a bass fisherman's boat. You'll see me wiping it down today when I spill something on it. Where'd my biting fish go? It'll happen sometimes. Sometimes you get in here, you start catching four, five, six of them, pulling them out of there, they start to fighting. Old bass will key in on that, and you got some bass cruising up through there. And they ain't as quite as have to jump out from behind a piece of brush when that old bass is cruising through there. Oh, I was. 
Boat's still moving. Feel the boat there. There he is. That's a better one. Better looking bluegills. Decent one. Good bait. Bam. I said, you know pretty quickly if they're in here like that right there. Ah, missed him. See if one comes back to it. There we go. Keep forgetting I've got a uh, J hook on here instead of a circle hook. So uh, I have to pop that hook a little bit, get it to set. I get kind of spoiled fishing them circle hooks. Another one. I'm going to do, I'm gonna have to go to jerking them now. Crossing them teeth. All right, my truck. Oh, there we go. We got him. Got him, a little bigger one. That's going to say I'm getting ready to make a move over here to try a different little spot along this wall. Got another good one there. Using my little hand controls for my trolling motor. I only run a 12 volt, volt motor. I know a lot of people have asked me about that. Uh, I'd like to upgrade, uh, especially there's some stuff I'd like to do in some current uh, river current and down at the coast. I'd like to have me a 24 volt. Don't let that one get away. Don't let him get away. But uh, for now, I'm running a 12. What I do as slow as I try to get a boat moving, that works fine. But tell you what, if I was out fishing in Mississippi or Ohio or Missouri, I'd have to get me something bigger. You can see I'm back in a little cove pocket. I'm going to pull up in here. It's real shallow. It's a good place to catch them. It's also a good little place to duck out of the wind in here. Uh, looking at a little deep cut through here. Water's about 81. A little cooler than I thought it was going to be, but we did have that uh, good cold rain last night, and uh, it's been cool today. So That's the thing. Not all these banks are created equal, folks. There's uh, pockets with these fish, for whatever reason, we'll hang out, we'll feed, and where you will catch them. And it just varies. Sometimes it takes a little bit of looking, a little bit of walking. I say walking for you bank anglers. Uh, a little bit tougher for you to catch fish, find fish. Bank access is tough, I know. That's why I'm very admirable of the people who bank fish. It's a lot of dedication. It's how I started out. As a grown man was bank fishing until about 15, 18 years ago. Another thing about these thin wire Aberdeen hooks, they'll pull out a brush usually. We've got my gatsus, not there he goes, not so much. There's some around that tree right there. That's a better fish. That's a better one. Oh yeah, big big bluegill, big bluegill right there. That's a nice one. Nice fish. Nice one. Fish. Get back over there to that tree. Got a feeling there's more. Get off of it. There. Let's get on back up to it. I doubt I can. They were laid right up on that brush. In case you missed the first part, I'm using nothing but red worms. These are red worms I bought at the store. Uh, you can dig these up in your yard. You can use night crawlers. There's no magic combination here in using these things. You can use crickets. It's whatever you're comfortable with. Uh, some people love crickets. I hate chasing the thing myself. Uh, <laughs> so I use red worms. Plus, I can dig red worms up in my yard. I've got some places. Best thing to do is get you a place like in the. That's got something solid underneath it. Put you some leaves on top of it with a little bit of dirt. Make sure it stays wet. There he goes. Oh, dang. I'm sitting here backing the boat up. I'm about to lose one. There we go. Got him. These are fun. Fun fishing. Fun fishing. He ate it. A little bait. Clean that bait up. Like I said, you can get your money's worth out of these worms. It does not take a lot of them. You do not need a lot of worm on the hook. As a matter of fact, you get too much hanging off of there, they'll bite onto it, pull the whole thing off. 
right now they're feeding really aggressively sometimes earlier in the year they don't hit as good i can see them pop around it already with my polarized glasses there he is uh, they're hitting good now though this is uh bluegill fishing at its best this is when you can catch a bunch of them it's a great time to take kids fishing uh, which means it's really a great time for adults. We just like to blame it on the kids. That, oh, it's a good th good thing for kids to catch. Yeah, whatever. Adults like to catch them too. Adults like any, boom, there he is. Like any time, a, any time a fish bites in a rod bends. We love it, we know it. We just blame it on the kids. Oh, I'm gonna take the kids fishing because they like to catch them. Yeah, whatever. You like to catch them, pal. I admit it, I love catching these suckers. There he is. A little bluegill. They're on that tree. See what I'm gonna do. My old buddy Mac Byram says, don't leave biting fish because you'll insult them and the rest of them won't bite. So I'm telling you, I want to pull down this other, uh, I gotta bite. I want to pull down this other tree just if they're down there too. See, I always think, man, I'll go back to that tree and they'll be there. They may not. There you go. Oh, I missed him. We kind of got the wind pushing us up in here. It's shallow. Only about three feet of water in here. Let me see if there's anything on this. This is kind of open over here. There's some laid down brush in there I can see. They seem to like that stuff that's pushed out offshore a little bit further. It's another tree right up here in front of me. You see the sonar, only about three feet of water. Like I said, you don't have to use red worms. You can use night crawlers. You can use crickets, blood worms, whatever, whatever you like, whatever you got in your area. And they're different parts of the country use different kinds of stuff you can do this with jigs too i mean there are, there are people that are hardcore pan fish jig fishermen i do not have the patience for it nor the skill and uh but yeah it works it's good fishermen doing that old uh richard gene the fishing machine very good jig fisherman uh catches a pile of crappy doing it that way and uh he catches bluegill and stuff too so He's a little better fisherman than I am. Come on, sucker. I got you that time. I got you that time. They laid up on that brush. They liking that brush today. Up on the banks as much. It's all right. We're gonna try to work this brush here for a minute. See if we can stay on it. I'll be getting bit while I got all this slack in my line. Yep, there he goes, there he goes. Boom, got him. Oh, I missed him, come off of there. I don't know if you can see it, but the brush comes almost out to the boat. Boom, got him. I get the boat spun around into the wind. Whoop, I'm gonna lose him, catch him twice here. Yeah. to catch him twice. Well, there you go, folks. That didn't take long. We put about 18 fish in the boat and uh, we're ready to go fish. Uh, catching brim can be pretty easy, especially here uh, after the spawn is kind of going and in swing for them. So uh, you can catch them all summer long. Great time to get out and fish. Take the kids fishing. It's usually action packed. If you like this video, please hit subscribe, smash the thumbs up and hit that bell symbol so you'll be notified when new videos are out. We'll see you on the water.